welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here today. My name is Joss and if you love to talk about fragrance and perfume, you've come to the right place and I hope you'll consider subscribing. I also hope you consider following me on Instagram where I cover slightly different content but usually involving perfume too. So today I'm very excited to bring you a review of Oud Ambrosie by Maison Lancome. So this was a poll that I recently posted on my community tab on YouTube. And to get to my community tab, just go to my homepage on YouTube and then click on the tab that says community. And it's a little bit different on your PC or desktop versus your phone. I have been posting on my community tab. I kind of go back and forth a little bit between Instagram and the community tab, but when I find good deals, I post them there on one of the two. And um, I've posted a couple polls. So this poll was about fall fragrances and I put in five choices and this was the top vote. And so I'm gonna be talking about that. And I would love to hear other perfumes from my collection that you would love to hear me review down in the comments. So if you have any perfumes you'd like me to review from my collection, please let me know in comments. Mood Ambrosie from Maison Lancome. This is sort of a niche line from the of Lancome. And this started a few years ago. I wanna say 2016, 15 or 16. A lot of designer fragrance houses have kind of their upscale private line. They have different names for it. Like there's Ar Armani Privé, Chanel Exclusives, Dior has one. Most of the big um, fragrance houses have uh, kind of an exclusive line. Tom Ford has one. So, so Lancome's exclusive line is called Maison Lancome and they come in these gorgeous bottles. Um, this is the big size. Um, I did a dedicated video to Maison Lancome quite a while ago. I'm probably due for an update on that one, but the big size 3.4 ounce, 100 milliliters looks like this and it, there's always a beautiful etching on the side. Um, and then the house name is there. You can get these engraved um, if you order them from Lancome. Um, this one I've had for a couple years and it is my favorite from the line. And it's one of my one of my favorite fragrances from my collection. It's it's for sure in my top 20, maybe my top 10. Anyway, I love it. It's gorgeous. It's got cedar, patchouli, oud, mask, rose, and honey and it's got this gorgeous color amber and it's been um this color um that hasn't changed unfortunately this is discontinued so i'm going to be talking about some alternatives to this beautiful fragrance so i've been wearing it all day today and i would not say this is an office friendly fragrance for me it's a of course you can <laughs> With social with social distancing, it may be more appropriate to wear this to the office now than it used to be. But it's a very powerful, long-lasting, delicious, intoxicating oud and rose. And if you like oud and rose, this is this is one of the most beautiful ones that I've personally tried. I've got some um, new uh, perfumes coming that may be kind of similar, but. Um, I just love this. This size from Maison Lancome is $208. So it's, I guess, mid-range for an, ex it's probably actually on the lower end of the exclusive line prices, but it's it's up there. Um, so, so I think for me, this is a special occasion fragrance. Although when it's like quarantine and COVID days, I do wear this around the house too, because <laughs> that's just how I roll. But this is um, very good for cold weather. I don't think it would do well in very hot weather because it does have a very sweet characteristic to it. It is, um, like I said, probably lasts eight to 10 hours. And it's just, Maison Lancome has its own kind of DNA, I think, as a house. And this has it to me, um, sweet, it's definitely gender neutral. So I think this is marketed as gender neutral, possibly to women, but it's definitely gender neutral. This would smell beautiful on anyone. Um, it is not for everyone. It is something that you should sample before you buy a bottle this size, I would, I would suggest. Um, but it is so unique and deep, rich, kind of exotic. Um, that damask rose, I think, is a key ingredient because it just it just blossoms on the skin. This has uh, relatively few notes listed, 
and you can really get all those notes. You can get the honey and the oud and the rose and the cedar and the patchouli. I can actually, at different times, pick up those different notes in this fragrance. And I just find it so enchanting and it's like a work of art to me. And a lot of perfumes that I love, I consider a work of art, but this is probably one of the most creative um, perfumes that I feel I have in my collection. I talked about it recently in the Woman Inside Me tag that I did, which I'll post up in the cards. And um, this is kind of the creative um, woman inside me. I picked this one because it is, it's just like, if I wanna feel like artsy and creative and giving me some inspiration, this is the ticket. So I love it. It's a 10 out of 10 for me. And um, something that folks are um, curious about, is it similar to Oud Bouquet? So um, I think it is a little bit similar to Oud Bouquet. I have the new, new formulation of Oud Bouquet. There is an older formulation. I feel like Oud Bouquet is, is not quite as intense. Oud Ambrosie is much more intense and kind of poppin' to me. Oud Bouquet is, is a softer, um, a gentler, not quite as in-your-face fragrance, I think. Um, there are definitely some similarities, but I think Oud Bouquet is more wearable, like traditionally wearable, um, people-pleasing, mass, mass appealing. Whereas Oud Ambrosie is just so much more intense and vibrant and um, deep, dark, gorgeous. Um, it's I think it smells a lot better on the skin than on paper, but um, so there's some similarities. The closest perfume that I have sampled that reminded me of Oud Ambrosie is from the house of Atelier des Or, and it is called Rose Omeyade, and I'll put it up on the screen because it screen because it is kind of an unusual spelling and I'm not entirely sure I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I did sample that one. I got a little sample from um, Lucky Scent that I bought and I was really kind of floored because it really reminded me of Oud Ambrosie. So that one I believe is on fragrancebuy.ca currently for around $150 for a 3.4 ounce, I think. So that's not a bad deal for that, um, for that niche house um, and it's cheaper than that Oud Ambrosie when it was still available. So you could potentially find this secondhand. Um, but like I said, I thought the Rose Omeyade from Atelier des Or was pretty darn close. So that would be the route that I would go if this is something you're interested in. Um, some other ones that are somewhat similar from Maison Lancome, I have Lotre Oud in a travel spray. I believe this one's discontinued now as well. So this, Lotre Oud, I'm not sure if it has the rose in it. I think that's the biggest difference here is this seems to have more of the wood and less of the rose, but it's beautiful. Um, I think Maison Lancome does Oud very beautifully. I also have a big bottle of Jasmine Marzipan, and then I have these two travel sprays. One is Orange Bigarade, and the other is Iris Drage. So it's a very, very good house. I really haven't tried anything from the house that I don't like. I was able to sample some of the rose um, more rose intensive fragrances from Maison Lancome thanks to the fabulous Lulu and I'll link Lulu's channel below. Um, she very graciously sent me um, Rose Berberanza and Parfait de Roses um, decants. So those are gorgeous and they have that DNA, the Maison Lancome DNA that I love. That's part of Oud Ambrosie. So, um, and I know on Fragrantica, if you look, there is um, some other options that other people have put in as kind of similar. Most of them I hadn't really heard of, so I'm not sure on the availability. But the other thing I wanted to mention is that it got four out of five stars in Luca Turin and Tanya Sanchez's Perfumes the Guide 2018 version. That's a pretty comprehensive guidebook for a lot of popular perfumes and niche perfumes, so that's a pretty good rating for um, Luca Turin, who can sometimes be a harsh critic. So um, so that is a, a really good resource. If you're interested in finding Luca Turin and Tanya Sanchez's opinions on some perfumes, I love it. It's a great book. It's, it's a fun read. It's, it's very funny and entertaining. And it allows the perfume lover to really geek out. So I love those books. Um, and it's got a rating of 3.94 out of 5 on Fragrantica, which is pretty good for Fragrantica. Those are my thoughts on 
Oud Ambrosi. I hope you enjoyed this review. And again, please let me know about any other perfumes from my collection that you'd like to hear me review. And also give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Feel free to give it a thumbs down if you didn't. And I'll see you again very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.